Elementary Electroplating Experiments Part 4 Modifying the anode mountings, correctly setting the voltage and current and showing the results. But first of all I need to clean up my workshop's workspace because it's a disgrace. The tidiness of my workshop started off quite well, but then I worked on this traction engine for a customer and owing to the COVID-19 restrictions it's still here. But all is not lost because I sold the 3.5 inch gauge Jinty chassis I temporarily moved this Black 5 chassis and the traction engine sits there. So now I can have a really good clean up. Once I'd cleared the workbench it was time to do some proper work. On screen at the moment are three pieces of metal. And the piece of metal at the front started off as a plain old piece of brass rod. I used this piece of brass rod when I first started these experiments so it spent quite a lot of time as the cathode in the electrolyte. And later on, I dropped the piece of brass a bit lower into the electrolyte. If you look at the vernier gauge on my micrometer, it's reading approximately 22. And this is how the piece of brass rod started off. The diameter of the brass rod is not 22 thou. To find the true diameter of the piece of brass rod, you need to add this 22 thou to the other numbers on the barrel. I'm not really interested in the total diameter just the thickness of copper that's been deposited on the brass rod. In this clip you can see where I moved the position of the brass rod in the electrolyte. The micrometer vernier now reads 23. Which is really not bad because it wasn't in the bath of electrolyte for long and I've cleaned it up on the polishing spindle and in the lathe. So through the use of witchcraft I've managed to deposit one thousandth of an inch of copper on the brass rod. But don't forget that's only half a thou at each side. But look at this, the part that I'm interested in is the part that spent a lot more time in the electrolyte. And according to the micrometer, this is 5 thou. And don't forget, when I first copper plated this piece of brass, it was very dull indeed. This is after I put it in the lathe and shined it up with some wet or dry sandpaper, and then polished it up on my polishing spindle. So this would appear that the results are encouraging. My only requirement in the workshop for electroplating is to electroplate brass parts to fit on turned brass chimney caps. But now I know what my modest electroplating rig is capable of, I can think of a lot more applications. If a steam fitting is a slack fit in the boiler bush, why not electroplate the thread on the steam fitting to make it bigger? Which theoretically would also make it so that the brass couldn't be de-zincified by the action of the water over time. I'll probably try this and make a video about it using the logic as I'm learning, then so are the viewers. I have a problem with my anodes. These are brass bolts through the copper plates. And oh dear, this is what's happened to the small crocodile clips that were clamped onto the bolts. They've just dissolved to rust, so I need to do something about this. And the answer, as usual, is simple. Here are a couple of pieces of quarter of an inch diameter copper pipe. I flattened one of them completely and partly flattened the other one using a hammer. Very much like this one in fact. Once I'd flattened both the pieces of copper pipe, I drilled some holes in each end of the flattened pipe and bolted them to the copper plates. Before doing this though, I bent the ends of them so they would hook over the food container that I'm using as an electrolyte bath. I have of course had various suggestions from viewers about how to do this. Some good ideas, some not so good. Surface area is important, and for the size of my electrolyte bath, these two copper plates give quite a good surface area, and are very easy to keep clean. I assume that you are supposed to clean them from time to time. This is very small scale electroplating, but to be honest, this can be very dangerous. Note that I've put CuSO4, poison, copper sulphate on the lid. This is not for my benefit. It does actually resemble the stuff that you see in shops called slush, a partly frozen blue liquid. But I don't recommend drinking this stuff. Also, when you're using it, you don't want to splash yourself with it. And these are essential. Just cheap, disposable safety goggles. Just as it says on the label. And they're also useful if you're lighting fireworks. Wearing rubber gloves is also recommended, but I can't do that because I'm having to operate the camera. It's time to set up the rig. The beauty of this system is, once I've finished electroplating, 
I will be able to remove the anode electrodes and any other bits and pieces that are in the tank when it's operating. Then I can replace the lid to stop the electrolyte from evaporating or being spilt. Here I'm fitting the small air pump and I'm plugging the USB lead into the power supply which keeps a small unit charged. Here I'm testing that it's working and as you can see this is on the lowest speed and there's enough agitation in the tank to stir it up a bit. A few people have recommended that I get a magnetic stirrer but they're a bit on the small side and they're quite expensive. I think this works okay. I will watch it over time. In this clip I'm connecting the anodes otherwise known as the red wires fitted with a crocodile clip on the end. These shouldn't corrode away because they're not actually in the electrolyte. And here's the completed setup. It's quite neat, very portable, and it won't get in the way in the workshop. It's really nice to have some bench space again. Now we're ready to go. The air stone is bubbling away, the electrodes are in position. All I need to do is find something to electroplate. In the outer part of my workshop where the acid bath and skeleton live was this. I received it as a gift from someone years ago. It's made from brass and it's quite tarnished. The first thing to do is to clean it up. Because I'm just testing my acid bath, I'm not taking too many pains to make it really good. I really should use the polishing spindle and get a finish that I could see my face in. That would be ideal. Because the smoothness of the electroplating is relative to the finish of the metal underneath. Because the deposited copper will follow very accurately any hill or valley on the parent metal. I bent a couple of thin pieces of copper tubing to hold it in the bath in the right position. The copper tube across the top of the tank is the cathode and on one end of it is the cathode wire that comes from the power supply. And again this is fitted with a crocodile clip and it's just clamped on the end. Before lowering this into the bath though I set the voltage. I'm going to try this one at 2 volts. On this power supply I can't limit the amperage separately and that largely depends on the physical size of the part being plated and the proximity of the part to the anodes. Now it's all set up in the workshop the good thing is I can get on with another job while just leaving the parts to be plated. And after two and a half hours working on something else this is what it looked like when I took it out of the bath. I think I'm quite pleased with this. I don't know how much copper's been deposited on the part and it's not very shiny although I think there's a way to make it shinier. I'll keep you posted when I figure it out. I like to keep things simple and not too dangerous. I've been doing a bit of bedtime reading about commercial electroplating and it's a bit scary. Some of the electrolytes contain cyanide and other harmful things and I don't want to electroplate in the morning, have my dinner and then expire. The air pump is off, the power is off and I've just sat the lid back on top of the bath to stop any spiders from committing suicide. I've rinsed the part in some clean water and this copper plating does actually look alright. The only problem is, to polish it up I will have to remove the top surface of the copper. This just looks like copper when it's come out of my acid bath and I cannot polish it just using a cloth, so I took it into the outer part of the workshop and used my polishing spindle with some of the abrasive soap stuff, and to my surprise none of the brass became visible through the copper layer. In this clip I'm finishing the cleanup process using some brass or wadding, followed by buffing it up using a cotton cloth. And this is what it looks like. The surface isn't perfect because as I mentioned earlier, I didn't make the surface perfect before I plated it. And on the next part of the plate I'm going to really polish it up before I even start. It will still need manually cleaning though, it will not come out of the electrolyte looking like this. But as far as I'm aware there are commercial compounds you can add to the electrolyte that give you a shiny finish. As I mentioned earlier I'm looking into it. Here's a quick flashback to see what the plaque looked like after I unscrewed it from the wall when it was brass and tarnished. And now it looks like this. It looks like it's made from copper, which is the general idea. It's nice to have a copper plated bullshit corner plaque. And that concludes the episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. 
please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.